Hey guys, welcome back to our review of Creation and Control. We're going to be dealing with the Shaper cards today uh, and those neutral uh, runner cards which are going to have what I think is a pretty good impact on the game. Uh, if you didn't catch the first half of this review, you can check it out at this link and that will take you right there. So uh, catch up with us and you guys ready for the runner side? Let's run. All right, let's do it. Tim, kick it off with Kit, because uh, we had a lot to say about this card on our most recent podcast, and I'm curious if the uh, perception is the same. All right, the first card is Riley Kit Peddler. She has zero link. She's a transhuman. She's also a runner. I guess I should say that. Uh, <laughs> Good to know. She's a cyborg. Uh, she has 4510 for her deck building restrictions. Uh, the first piece of ice you encounter each turn gains code gate until the end of the run. I originally thought this was the best card in the pack, and I had misread the card. I thought that the, the ice gained Kogate until the end of the turn, uh, not the end of the run. And that's just nowhere near as good. <laughs> I mean... <laughs> so you're saying you can't dump a gang back into R&D, and those or just correct. spend another click to or run? nothing. It's yeah. no longer a Kogate at the end of that run. Which, I get why that is that way, because it was bonkers if not... In my head, at least. Uh, but, yeah, I mean, I, I think it's still good, but it's nowhere near the level that I thought it was. Anymore, man, I'm thinking that this really... I want this to have 12 influence instead of 10. Like, th this ability, to me, is good, but it has such, like, a... I, I don't know. Like, it's not... I mean, it's really good because you can guarantee a first-turn indexing, or you can mm -hmm. guarantee first-turn maker's eye, or... Different things like that, within reason. I mean, you have that kind of quick early burst of, you can win the game in that lame netrunner way, and then after that, it's like, I'm okay. gonna play a normal game. It's okay. Yeah. Even, even then, though, right? Like, I feel like the, I come back to this almost every time we discuss cards. But what it does to your opponent and how they kind of have to play, even though it's only the first run, where it's like, oh, I have a server, and they normally couldn't get to a card I put down in advance twice or advance mm -hmm. once, or just put down. But now they can get. It, well, what I've found is whenever I'm playing against it, I just put a Kogi on the outermost part of my server, and yeah. then her identity is pointless. Which, I mean, it's not pointless because it's making me put a Kogi on the outside, but like, it's not like that hurts me in any way. Yeah, pop-up windows being so common now has really hurt a kit. Just, you just throw the pop-up window at the outside of R&D, and it's like, you want that anyway, and now her ability's useless. Now that said, I mean, it, it is true that in one way it makes code gates more essential because you need them on the outside of your server. But on the other hand, it makes code gates less good because let's say you have like your standard, I'm gonna play like uh, maybe a toll booth on my first ice on my remote, and then I'm gonna play like an Eli on top of it to make it you know difficult, or maybe play even an ice wall because they don't have a barrier or something. Well, now that's not nearly as good, because just a Gordian is going to get through that entire server and get down to that agenda. It makes them more efficient and less efficient. Yeah, it's mm. interesting, right? So there's a lot to think about with this. I, I do think she's a strong runner. I think there are, there are going to be some people who love this style of play, and that's awesome. Like That's why identity should be doing. Um, I just am thinking right now that five influence loss is a bit of a, a bit of a, you know... <laughs> Uh, little too much. Achilles a little is, too much. Yeah. Is that less of a thing in like a year or two when there's a ton more cards? Yeah, yeah, I think so. I think influence gets really interesting the more that cards come out where you just... Every faction kind of starts to get ways of solving whatever problems that you have in their own personal way. Like, the shapers might solve certain problems in different ways than the criminals would. But right now, it's like, if you want something like E3, for instance, you gotta go to criminal to get it. But in two years... If you need to break through multiple subroutines and that kind of thing is happening, there's probably a way for Shaper to do that. It's pretty fascinating, too, because the more cards that come out, the more splash options you have, too. Yeah. So it, it kind of works both ways, where there's just so many more options every pack. Yeah. But just I, exciting. I'm excited to see if someone can really make, make Kit work. I think we'll see. I think this is a competitive deck here. You can make a competitive Kit deck. I agree. And I think there will be people that really get a kick out of that. That's, that's great. You get, really get a kit out of it. Hello. Like someone like Ruggle, like Ben would be like, oh, just, I just love the flavor of this. So that's cool. Um, so let's move on to the Professor, the Keeper of Knowledge. I like that he's natural, so he's not a cyborg or anything. He just has a really cool wrist piece there. 
Um, the f- really important to note, he's a 45-1. We've not seen this before. That's really fascinating. He better be packing an ability. Uh, yeah, well, luckily he is. Uh, the first copy of each program in this deck does not count against your influence limit. Love this card. <sighs> Huge. I mean, just, you're never not going to see the professor being good. I love... He can't get worse. He can't get worse. I just love the idea of this. Yeah. It is really awesome. It's the most... To me, this is the most shapery identity that I've seen. I mean, Cat is close to me because of sufficiency and and that kind of thing, but the Professor is just... It's a keychain. It's... You have... You can have 20 of programs that all do random various things you might need. And you can test run for them. You can self-modify and code for them, which we haven't gotten to yet. Uh, fantastic. I mean, the interesting thing about this card to me, and what I'm going to be looking for in most professor decks, <clears throat> is what they spend that one influence on. I was going to ask: Is the most important question with the professor, what is your influence? I think so. I, mean, I don't know if it's the most important, but it's definitely important. That's probably where like the decks are going to vary the most widely. Because like, because you know, a professor deck, it's like. All right, so here's probably the tools you're going to include in your program suite, like one of all these things with your test runs. And then it's like... Would you put a second uh, data sucker in? Where's the one influence? I think that's probably what I would do. I don't know. I need to look at all the cards. Yeah, you could do any <laughs> number of interesting things there, so who knows? Yeah, I'm, I'm really excited <coughs> to see this card. I, but, yeah, options are wide open with this guy. I'm, I'm a Shaper player, and this is the first one since Kate that I'm really intrigued by. Yeah. Like, just really thinking about it and trying to figure out a way to make this work, so we'll see what happens. Nice. Next up we have Exile. He has one base link, he's a street hawk, identity natural. Whenever you install a program from your heap, draw a card. He's a standard 4515. I love it. I like this guy. He's just the the perfect kind of weird that really appeals to me and uh, just makes things interesting. This is a completely different way to play Shaper. It's all about, all about archive, or not archives, but your uh, heap on the runner side. And we've seen, like we were talking about Ben just a second ago, but I love, he, he had a Shaper deck, you can see it on like the regional videos, and it was all about diesel and uh, quality time, and drawing a ton of cards, putting all those programs in your uh, heap, and then installing them with like uh, retrieval runs and things like that, and now we have more stuff to do that in this pack. So all of a sudden, Shaper and Heap is a very beautiful combination. It's, like a, it's it. a beautiful idea because it's like, oh, I, we're, all these spare parts over here, I'm going to build something new out of uh-huh. it. Oh, there's a Fin Fatale. Yeah, you draw a card. It's awesome. It's pretty excellent. Yeah. It's a really... I know that Ben built an Exile deck and I played against it the other day and he was just moving Fin counters all over the place. I'm just like... Ah. Yeah, you can Fin anywhere. It's very cool. <clears throat> I think, that, again, this is a really good way to unlock styles of play that certain people are going to be attracted to. These three identities... Uh, make three different, completely different types of people excited about Shaper. They're wildly different, but they all somehow also really feel Shapery. Mm-hmm. Like, they really do pull on elements of being <laughs> Shaper. And it's it's cool to see that introduced and make it makes some cards potentially more useful than they were beforehand. Yeah, and I really like the one base link on him. I think that's can be huge. important for him to be costed effectively. All right, up next we have uh, Escher. It's a three-cost event run. Uh, make a run on HQ. If successful, instead of accessing cards, rearrange any number of ice protecting all servers without resing or deresing the ice. The same number of ice must be protecting each server after the rearrangements as before, and it costs five influence. That's something. It yeah. Is what are you what are your thoughts on this, Tim? Yeah, this is ridiculous. You uh, hate that as uh, Genteki, right? It's bad. It's like oh, I'm gonna put Chum at the bottom, and then I'm gonna. It's it's not not the best thing in the world for me. Yeah. Uh, I feel like this is made for Kit, just out, thrown out there, where it's like, oh, now I get to put non-code gates out front. Yeah. I get to put your pop-up windows at the end. I feel like it's made for ev- everyone. Like, it, it's never bad. <laughs> it's made for everyone. It's definitely a shaper card. Like, I well, would, it's not made I, for everyone because it's five influence. I'd be hard-pressed no, to get I mean, five influence for this. Thing. I could totally see going five influence for this. I don't I Like, don't if know. I'm going for an R&D Big Dig deck and I hit... HQ one time's like, oh, you have three pop-up windows rest, I'm gonna move them all to R and D. Yeah. And now I'm just gonna medium the hell out of you. <laughs> That's I mean, that is ultimately the strength of the card, but again, like this is kind of what we're talking about with um, successful demonstration. Is 
Which I thought was a good card. You did think it was a good card. I'm immediately kind of suspicious of this card because there will be times... It's like, it's that card where when it's the right time for this card and you have it and it works you out... You annihilate someone. It is just beautiful. It's a beautiful thing. And otherwise, you're probably sitting on this card for a while in your hand... Or you draw it later and you don't need it. You can't get through HQ anyway. Like Shaper can get through HQ. Interesting stuff like that. Yeah, they, they generally can. I mean, I, I mean, sure, they might protect against it once in a tournament or something. But yeah, it's potentially worth. Like, I, I definitely wouldn't go all out <clears throat> on this. Where it's like, oh, I have three, and then mm-hmm. you're just stuck with it a lot. But I mean, as a Shaper player, you throw one in, and it's like. If, if it's the wrong time, you just leave it in your hand, or you discard it after you've drawn. Mm-hmm. If it's the right time, that could, it, it could it's just it's the, such a powerful effect. The benefits outweigh the co- the negative. It gets it gets a lot of points to me because of what we're seeing too with uh, same old thing. Isn't that what it is? The mm-hmm. where you can re- play an event out of your archive or your heap. Mm-hmm. So. I mean, even if you need to chuck this <clears throat> turn one because you have six cards in hand, they know it's just there. Just leave it there, yeah, yeah. And, and you can always do it. I think this is a perfect, like, like Tim said, this card is an awesome setup card for your push to finish a game. Like, I need to get to R&D. I've got a couple of R&D interfaces, maybe even a medium going, and R&D is crazy. I'm just going to switch it all around. Or if you're playing with a mega server, it's like, oh, you had four, you, know, you had a toll booth, Ichi, Ichi 2.0, and an Eli. It's like, well... Now that's a pop-up window, pop-up window, chum. Yeah. Or, or whatever, you know. Yeah, and then you can <laughs> grab that agenda, yeah. So it does, it has, cer- certainly the card is powerful and potent. <clears throat> um, it has a big effect, but without the right timing, it doesn't really do anything. So It's good. I mean, this is the perfect balance. It's a conditional card, but if you if you get the payoff, then it's huge. Huge payoff. Yeah. Let's talk about, <laughs> let's talk about not huge payoff. No, let's do it. Um... Tim may disagree. I, I'm glad that you are actually are disagreeing. Um, exploratory Romp. I love this. Very card. cool little dinosaurus uh, art there. I love that. Uh, one cost event. It's a run. Make a run. If successful, instead of accessing cards, remove up to three advancement tokens from a single card in or protecting the attack server. Now, before I go any further, this card certainly has uses. And one of those huge uses is the game that we're seeing now, uh, which is I'm going to install something and advance it twice. And it's not just Jinteki. Jinteki does that awesomely. As you, if you watch the regional again, like you saw that all over the place where it's a hard decision. Now they've got the brain damage trap. It's an even harder decision. I felt that last night hard. Going down to three cards and like turn two against Jinteki is like impossible. Um, so it's a great way to check out traps. It's exactly what it is in Exploratory Romp. You go in there, you take all the tokens off that thing, and then you hit it again, and boom, there it is. So it certainly has its uses. Um, it's also very strong against Wayland. Mm-hmm. It's like, oh, you advanced the Ice Wall three times last turn? No, you didn't. Yeah. yeah and then yeah. you just wait the turn for one credit. Well, it's going to be more than one credit. Whatever it is, not <laughs> as much as... It, not as much worth as it is for a turn of the corporation's time. That's where I get lost in it, though, where it's like, all right, so let's say you have three, you actually get to move three advancement tokens on it. <clears throat> so I have to successfully run on something that has three advancement tokens on it, and then, instead of accessing it, then I get to remove the tokens. So yeah. let's say it is on an ice wall. So what, are you going to spend two or three more credits to get through of the three extra strength on the like if it's three extra strength on the ice wall you're probably spending two or three extra to break it but it's also saving you how much money over the time turn of the time of the game well it's saving you assuming they don't just click 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 again right but then you've made them waste two turns getting the same amount of strength it is interesting because like i understand what you're saying for sure the advancement mechanic is always kind of hard to really wrap your mind around because you're spending one credit to advance but you're also spending one click to advance so it's a click and a credit every time you do that. So if you can spend like one click to make the run and one credit, and then you know maybe you pay three or four to get in there, but you take three away, you've taken three clicks a time and three credits. I get so that. So it's good. I'm not saying, but I don't think that's the use, obviously. That's, it's not the use. That's not I'm why saying, you run this card. But I'm saying if you're playing against Wayland that's not running any traps, and mm-hmm. you have this card, it's like, well, here I am. Yeah. I mean, you go down, check it out, and maybe you use it, maybe you don't. I don't know. Who knows? I just see this card and it feels so conditional. 
I, I will say that having played both the new the new HB and uh, Tim Jinteki, you either expose or you run cards like Explore to I was going to say, would you, you do both. would you rather just have Infiltration? I don't know. No. Nope. I don't know. I wouldn't. Mm-hmm. It's funny that we're on this side of the argument. We could do both. I mean... I don't know. I, I just... I'm not sure that this, like, a card slot... Because you are also spending a click and a card and the credits to make the run on this. So... There's a lot more than just, oh, I'm going to pay one. It's Well, I mean, every card has the click to draw it, so that's a moot point. And then <clears throat> it's just two clicks because you play it and a credit, <clears throat> plus whatever you spend to break it. Uh, it still is saving you money over the long run, especially if you're playing against like your, your advanced Wayland that's going to uh, be advancing cards like crazy and then commercializing. Like, <clears throat> if I can deny you any of those advancements, it's going to save me a ton of money over time. Because you're going to be advancing it anyway, I might as well try to be as efficient as possible the amount of times I'm going to have to break it. We can agree to disagree on the usefulness of this card, <clears throat> but I just want to say this. In a year, <clears throat> I want to know how many people run this card. Well, it could get way better, because I think advancement tokens are going to get more and more important, you know, as more traps come I mean, out, I think as it's more gonna, things come out. It's only going to get more important. I think it's not going to get used <laughs> at all. That's my thought on the card. We'll see. In a year, right. we'll do another Sorry. video. That may be true right now. <laughs> the true. exploratory ROM. But I think when there's a lot more cards out, it's not worth the card slot. Fair. Fair, fair. All right, uh, Zach, you got freelance? Yeah, zero cost job, event, freelance coding contract, trash up to five programs from your grip, gain two for each program trash. So good. Yeah, I think this exile. is really good. <clears throat> exile. I think this is really, I mean, Exile, of course, just wrecks this thing. Just I mean, perfect. Even if you're just running test runs. Mm-hmm. It's like, I'm going to trash stuff and put it, what, now I have options whenever I want them, and you can't. I mean, I mean, I like it. <laughs> t- I like it too. For um, good example, being like <clears throat> noise deck that I was playing last night, or just any deck that, let's say, I've seen this out of um, out of a lot of shaper decks too, where you just you run a ton of your icebreakers so that you get your suite up super fast, and then like two turns later, you've drawn like copies of three or four of them and you're just sitting there in your hand and you don't have any use for these things. So you get the efficiency and like the, the it's so consistent that you can get your rig up super fast. And then this card comes in for after your rig's set up super fast, you got all this trash that you don't need. It's just redundant. You just chuck it all, you get five, <coughs> eight, ten credits and I just think awesome. it is ridiculous <coughs> with Exile. Like it just goes. It's just perfect. Like synergy. quality of time and then freelance coding contract. I'm also a decent fan of it with a professor. <coughs> It's not bad. Because you're going to be running a lot of programs. You're also going to be running a one of a lot of programs, so you're going to be trashing a lot of those programs. So. But if you have ways of getting right, right, programs right. back. Right. Which you will. It's just a solid tool for everyone. <clears throat> Even for Anarchs with Retrieval Run. I mean, it's just... It's only one influence. It's just good. It's super solid. Love it, man. Love that card. This next card I also love. Woo! Uh, Scavenge. It's a zero-cost event. As an additional cost to play this card, trash an install program. Uh, install a program from your gripper heap, lowering the install cost of that program by the cost of the program trashed. It's two influence. All right, so explain what you can do with FIMS here. You can play this card, trash the FIM as the cost, and then play the FIM as the effect. Yeah. That's official. Well, as efficient no, as it can be. It, yeah. Lucas it's responded. Official. Yeah. So you play it. You play a FIM, you put trash. your token on something, which is awesome, right? So let's say I play a FIM, I put it on toll booth. I run through the toll booth a few times, you trash the toll booth, put a new thing up. I can trash that fim with this card and replay that exact same fim from the now in my in my discard pile fim and, play. and put a new token on something. Now, like tell me this. This may not be possible. Test Could, run? Can you test yep. run into a fim, use the fim, trash the fim, put the fim back into play on And it doesn't go to the top of the deck. Run it again, and it stays in play. Correct. It's pretty fantastic. Cards don't have memory. Yeah, it's nuts. It's really fantastic. Yep. It, I mean, Woo. so much synergy here, man. Woo. I mean, shape, this is exactly what shapers have needed. It's efficiency. It's interesting. It's a different way to like approach the game and play the game and set your stuff up. It's, I just feel like those turns where like you're you're the corp and you're looking across and they've got seven, ten credits and you're like, oh, they can't really do anything. Yeah. And then they just explode on where. you, with and can get past anything that you even thought was good. Shapers so good at that, like. They really are so good at that. It's like they're just a test run away from anything that they want. And it's crazy. It's, it's just run the away. most stressful thing ever. Sounds really. like a commercial. 
It, Skyfish is good. Great card. Yeah. All right, Levy AR Lab Access or Levi AR Lab Access. I think it's a Levy. It's got to be Levy. Um, it's a five cost event. Shuffle your grip and heap into your stack. So shuffle your discard pile in your hand into your deck. Okay, we had to get that there. Uh, then draw five cards. Remove Levi AR Lab Access, also known as Levy AR Lab Access, from the game instead of trashing it. So you get everything in your heap back into your deck, you draw five cards, and then you remove this thing from the game. So Great. It's, like a, it's a mid-game mulligan for five. But but better, because it's just better. Uh, well, it's also better because like if you have one card. That's I was playing against Ben Ruggles the other day. I was playing Trenteki. That's and he three, was, three mentions here. He was playing, I, I play against him a lot. Uh, and he was running this card, and I was playing Trenteki, and I got him down to one card left in the deck, I think, which is right whenever... I can seriously get to uh, flatlining. You can take the flatline mode, yeah. Uh, and he's like, I'm going to play uh, Levy AR Lab Access. I was just like... <laughs> <laughs> Not only does he now have five cards in hand, but he's also Full got deck. everything back. Oh, man, that's awful. Man, this is a great card. And the thing is, like, it's I can see it working in every single faction. Mm -hmm. But I also can see why you wouldn't want to spend the three influence on this card. So it's... It's that perfect balance of like, Shaper has an awesome card for free, essentially, and then everyone else wants it, but we don't know how bad they want it yet. Because I mean, I've even thinking, I always, my mind always goes to Anarch, because I play Anarch all the time, and it's like, if I have a bunch of Parasites, and pro, like all that stuff that I've trashed, and I can get them back in and research them with Jin. It's good news. I mean, Noise could go nuts <clears throat> with that, but like, is it gonna I'm, be three I'm just, influence? I'm just trying to think how many times I can play an account siphon in a, in a game. Yeah. I'm picturing just as deja vu's and same from the shaper thing. perspective, and then, putting one of these in my deck. I can. It, it, even if I just discard it or it gets to my heap somehow, like you're going to be running the same old thing, and so you just you can call on it whenever you want. Yeah. Like, it's I a, feel like it's almost always a one of in a shaper deck for sure. Yeah. Like, there's no reason not to yeah. have that available to your cause. Yep. Yeah. Awesome. I love seeing, by the way, I love seeing the high influence costs on all this, both on the HP side and on the Shaper side, starting to really kind of <clears throat> push these factions apart a little bit and, and give them a bit more of a personality. Really dig this. Next up we have another three influence card. Man, this is a... <laughs> this is <debate>. card. <laughs> 18 cost, hardware, it's a console. It gives you three memory. When you install Monolith, install up to three programs from your grip, lowering the install cost of each by four. You can trash a program from your grip, Prevent a brain or meat damage. Limit net one console damage. per player. Brain and net. Brain and net. I don't know why meat came out. <laughs> I love this card. I, yeah. I a lot think, of people hate this card, and I understand why. I get it. I think that the professor is going to run this, and he's going to love it. Mm -hmm. That's the thing. It's like, so people look at this and they say, so I'm essentially paying six for this console. Assuming that I get the full benefit, <laughs> I have the three programs of four or more cost. I have to get to 18 to do this. I have to have all these programs in my hand to do this. And I'm basically paying that cost for three memory. So I'm paying six for three memory and the ability to trash a program and prevent a brain or net damage. So is there something more to this card than that, that analysis? Is it the fact that you're all of a sudden really bursty with your programs and like that is a significant boon on top of the three memory? Is it just that three memory on a single card is worth six? Is it the ability to trash something out of your hand to prevent I mean, stuff? Preventing brain damage is probably the big part of this, I would think. Mm -hmm. uh, it's the first thing in a game that prevents brain damage. Mm -hmm. Which and you can do this any number of times. Yeah. Right? yeah so. I mean, I think... I do think the, the brain and net damage can be a big deal. But I'm really wondering... Not the like, net damage. It's just the brain damage. Like, net damage is okay. The ability at any point to really just, like, lay, for one click, lay down three programs... Yeah, you're saving could, a lot of time there. Could be the the big deal here, where it's like, you just don't know what Shaper's going to do. Like, okay, they've got 25 money. Are they going to drop whatever yeah. they want to drop? And so it's kind of this, this style of like, you can get whatever you want, whenever you want, in wherever you want, however you want. Like, it's just this weird, you don't know what they're going to do until they do it. But in my mind, I still think... It's kind of expensive yeah. for what you're getting. If it was like reduce every one of them by three and you paid 12. It is expensive, yeah. It's yeah. just so expensive because you have to have this plus money to really make it even worth doing. 
the the way that I see this card, at least for me, kind of working out is I'm thinking if I'm thinking like a shaper, maybe I first turn I play Opus out, and then or like I face check all the ice and then I play Opus in case it's like a Rotator or something stupid, and so I expose all their ice. I just start face checking stuff, gaining a ton of money, face checking, gaining money. And then I have a ton of different programs in my hand. And you just and click like, for money. Well, what ice do they have? And I'm just going to play Monolith, play out everything that's going to destroy their board right now. And I'm going to take advantage of it for as long as I can. And then in the meantime, I'll be building the rest of my suite out. I, mean, I feel know? like the three memory is also huge for people that will run the professor, who's going to have programs, bajillion yeah. programs. The more I, I think about this, unless I'm missing something, this might actually be best outside of Shaper. Uh-oh. Three influence, man. It's hard. You gotta run at least two if it's your console. The reason I'm saying that is I'm just thinking of the times when, like, I've seen Tim and Criminal with so much money. What if you send me with more than two programs in play, though? Maybe it's a new Criminal. I don't know. I, I've got a feeling that this is going to get more, used more outside of Shaper. I disagree with that. For now. Like, I mean, there might be more cards coming out later that make that the case, but... I don't know. We'll I, I mean, Professor runs it too well. It's just you can't really deny how well the Professor runs Cr this card. Criminal doesn't need seven memory. Criminal doesn't need the extra m burst of it. The Xanart? Maybe the new Criminal does. I mean, maybe. <laughs> but, I mean, you're spending at least six of your influence here. I mean, Anarch... Anarch you're not running Criminal Breakers because they're crappy. Anarch can get away with running this card. Um, the issue is, like... Are the our breakers that cost or our programs that cost more than four are Very few, few and far between. Like I would have to have Yogg, like Morningstar and Crypsis, like to really make solid use of this. Otherwise it's like two cost parasites, one cost data suckers, three cost uh, mimics, like so I just don't know. Like I feel like Shaper has the right costed programs, like all their stuff, the Gordians, the Magnum Opus is like right where you want it, and then they also have it in house, in faction. Like I, I like this out of Shaper. I'd be curious to see if someone can make this work. I, I still think it's. I think we'll see deck too expensive. We'll see the deck that makes it happen, definitely. All right, up next we have a card I hate. Uh, we have feedback filter. It's a two cost hardware gear. Uh, pay three credits to prevent a net damage, or trash it to prevent up to two brain damage. One influence. Do you hate it? Because it's good? I hate it because, I mean, it's just an answer for Genteki. <laughs> There's a lot of money to answer. I mean, Shaper can have that money, but it's a lot of money. It's a lot of money, but I mean, it's also, you're not going to die. But here's, here's this. We've talked to you immensely about the idea of Genteki, right? It's slowing the runner down. Mm -hmm. So if they're having to pay three every time we're preventing net damage, you're still slowing them down, right? Slowing them down, but it's a different slow. Different slow. It's a different slow. Uh, is money is. easier than cards? Money is easier than cards. Katie Jones. Yeah. KJ. Katie Jones, Opus. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, and I think shapers are going to run... I think a smart shaper is going to run at least one of this card. I mean, it depends. Any, any deck. Just the ability to trash and prevent two brain damage. That's like the new thing. If you haven't... Like, the new HP that... People are just now still experimenting with it, and it's terrifying. Straight like, Overbrider? Rider. Just, They're just yeah, damage. and just like all the sources of brain damage that they have, where you get in these situations, and it's like, I need, <laughs> I need help. Like, <laughs> don't let me take this brain damage. And so, I don't know. Feedback filter feels to me like, why are you not? Why is a shaper not going to have two credits to have this hanging out in the backfield just in case? I mean, would it not make more sense to run the card that increases your hand size? No, because I can get trashed. It is a resource, and it is. I don't like it. <laughs> I don't know, like, if that's the reason you're running it, it's like... It's it's different because with Public Sympathy, uh, it's a resource which can be trashed, uh, and also you have to use the actions to fill your hand up and keep them filled. Like, it's not like you can always just guarantee to have seven cards in your hand. You're going to be playing those cards and you're going to be down anyway. I, I mean, I'm not saying that Public Sympathy is a bad card. I'm just saying that it's... I think this is better. I would rather not have the brain damage. Yeah, I'd rather have this than public sympathy. But again, they both cost two. It's also one of those cards. I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna go into shaper influence for this card alone. I think this is just like a shaper. Hey, it's in. It's in faction. It's nice. I'll probably run one or two copies. I guess my question on that 
is it's just like if you're afraid of the brain damage right it well it's not necessarily that you're you're attacking against brain damage or you're worried about net damage or any of that it's just like why do you not have this card out it's just a great utility card like why not play it for two? I still don't buy that this is any better than Public Sympathy. Oh, definitely. It's so, it's a, it's not a resource. That's enough right there. Yeah. Oh yeah. All right. Oh yeah. I, I and like I can have three Public Sympathies out and three cards and die easily. Sure, but I mean you can have one card in your hand and get two brain damage and die. Like. Yeah, this prevents it. <laughs> I know, but I'm just saying like <laughs> it's the same like m the math is the same. You can have. You it's can say, oh, the, I have this many cards in my The hand. math of that is the same, but the effectiveness of the cards the corp has against the different cards is different. There's so many different ways to trash resources. There's so many different ways to give you a tag on the corporation's turn. I'll just disagree. And I mean, it's wrong. possible, but <laughs> I'm just saying, for me, like, my problem with this card is... You've got, like, here, Tim you, and Steven versus Zach. You, your opponent has to do something for this card to ever be useful. Right, which is the same thing for public sympathy. Really, no, you don't no. you don't care about your hand. Like, it, I hate the card wild side, but if you're running wild side or if you're just drawing a lot, like the 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 reason I'm talking about the other card is because your opponent doesn't have to do anything for you to be able to have a bigger hand. And if I if I'm playing Jinteki and I can oh I'm gonna go up to seven before I run like and I can just sit on seven. It's a I don't know. It just feels like if what you're scared of is brain damage and card damage, you can play around that. I would rather not size. lose the cards, though, is what I'm saying. Yeah, you won't die, but you're you're still losing the cards. Cycling through. It's a choice that players are going to have to make. I would rather n not lose the cards and have to pay money than have to lose the cards and draw back up. And that's not where I'm coming from. I'm coming from, I think the public sympathy is useful regardless, whereas this card has to have something happen for you to use it. But if you're Shaper, you might run one. That's all I'm saying. Maybe. All right, who's got this one? I'll do clone chip. Okay. Uh, one cost, clone chip, hardware, trash it to install a program from your heap. Paying the install Duh. Cost. It's great. Yeah, uh, paying the install cost. It's not an action, so you can do it mid-run. This is silly. Yeah. It's great. That's just silly. All right, next. It's just awesome. I mean, of uh, course, the synergy in this thing is, is unreal. What about that art? All right, next up, we have a three cost hardware, <laughs> Omni Drive. It's a gear. OmniDrive can host a single program of one memory or less. The memory cost of the hosted program does not count against your memory limit. A recurring credit uses credit to pay for using the hosted program. It's great. Uh, it was funny, Dennis was using this the other day and he put a net shield on it. <laughs> <laughs> so he could just always pay the one to prevent it. That's cool. That's pretty funny. Yeah, there's some cool and it stuff here. Take up your memory or anything. I think, I think the fact that this is essentially one memory and it can't be trashed by aggressive secretaries and all that. At least the Omni Drive can. I guess the program on it could. And that it's not a resource. I mean, all you got to do is use the program a few times and you're okay. It's essentially a Akamatsu mem chip and a cyber feeder in one. I like it a lot. I really do. Yeah. And it's three influence. So this is, I don't think you'll, you'll see this outside of Shaver at all. Like, mm -hmm. there's just no way that benefit is good enough. All right. Up next, we have Atman or mm -hmm. Otman. Also known as Otman. <laughs> Uh, it's a three cost, uh, one MU icebreaker, AI. Whenever you install Otman, you may pay X credits to place X power counters on it. It has plus one strength for every power counter on it. You can use a credit to break an ice subroutine on a piece of ice that has strength equal to Otman's strength. I love it. I think yeah, it's, it's a very with solid tool. Data suckers. What do you pay when you install it? Three. Yeah. And Why? you run data suckers. Why do you pay three? Because just that's the trouble. Like, average cost of ice. Cost of ice, and then you just data sucker it down to whatever you. Three. I 100% yeah. agree. Yeah, I just wanted your logic yeah, on it. For sure. And then, I mean, you. this is the kind of thing you. There's a lot of ways to think about this card. Like, obviously, the, the first thing you think about is like data suckers in Anarch stuff. And you think about either putting data suckers into Shaper and running this, or you think about putting this into Anarch and having the, the data sucker and maybe even Ice Carver if you want. It depends on like what ice you're more scared of, right? The interesting thing, like, so if you're using this and they have like varying strengths of ice, it can get a little tough. Like to get that many data sucker counters consistently, to constantly basically have the tools to make a run successful can be a little bit tough, but you have an auxiliary breaker for the low stuff. I mean, and even Tim's most hated card, maybe, Darwin, 
uh, can serve that function. It stays at one or two virus tokens, and anything two or one strength you can blow through with Darwin. Anything above that, you use Otman data suckers. That's a deck idea, right? Like that's a thing you can do. I kind of want to build an Otman deck where you just install three Otmans with different strengths, like a six five four, and mm -hmm. then like run a couple other breakers, and just. Also possible. <laughs> I mean, I think this thing. also has to be totally mid to late game when there's a particular piece of ice that you don't have a breaker for, and it can pop in and be a breaker for anything specific. Yeah. You can, if it's a toll booth, you can pay what you want to pay and be ready to go. Or if it's like uh, Archer with his yeah. four subroutines, it's like, oh, I'll just put this many counters on it, and then I'll pay one to get by it. I, I especially what like. I, I especially like this. Like, it's. Like I said, it, it's a really good in shaper. Actually, like I was thinking about this in NR because that's kind of where the brain goes when you're talking about varying strength on ice. But the fact that you can use all this install over it and reinstall it from your heap with new amount of power counters on it based on the ice that you're seeing, you can kind of rethink about how to do this card and reinstall. And like you, the thing is with shaper running this, it's not a permanent fixture of the board. No. It can leave and come back with different amounts. It also gets really expensive if you do that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But like something like scavenge. You can trash it just like you would a fin. You still have to pay to put the counters yeah. on it, so it's yeah, bring it out with more counters. But like, if you're using it to break ice, and it's one to break subroutines, I mean that's pretty cool. I get it. Yeah, I'm the same. So yeah, it, I just think I think it has potential. It's, it's, it's a good it's card. A potentially really it's good a card. card. Also, if you don't know what Otman is, look it up. It's awesome. It's Hindu <laughs> philosophy. Uh, that's like one of the things that I can actually claim to know a lot about. Cloak. One cost, one MU program. It is a stealth program, which have we seen a stealth program before? I don't nope. think we have. Uh, it's two influence, one recurring credit. Use it for, for, or I'm sorry, use it for icebreakers to pay for using icebreakers. Um, so it's like a cyber feeder At worst, a program. It's a one cost cyber feeder program. Mm -hmm. Memory cost. Which Shaper's hurting for usually. Yeah, I mean, this, <laughs> again, you're going to run this in Shaper. I mean, I don't think you find this outside of Shaper probably. But it's one for, all you gotta do is use it once and it's paid for itself. It's good. I mean, well, <laughs> if you're running Kate, yeah. don't even use it. Yeah. Just have it. And just then sell you can, it to the pawn shop. Yeah, just ASOPs it for three. And this is one of those, another instance where having a lot of memory is gonna start to be an issue. And so Monolith starts to look a little bit better. <laughs> <laughs> just saying. Just saying. Uh, next up, we have Dagger. Fitting. Hey. Goes with the cloak. Three costs, one memory, icebreaker, killer. One credit breaks sentry subroutine. One credit plus five strength. Use this ability only by spending a credit from a stealth card. Right. So you can only use dagger with cloak. It also starts out as zero strength, which is worth noting. Interesting. I don't think it's worth it yet. Mm. Uh, once we get some more stealth cards, if we get more stealth cards, uh, it'll start seeing some play, but it's just... To use any you know real consistency with this, you need to have at least one or two cloaks. And it it feels like the thing is the the two sentries that I'm most scared of, uh, I believe I was thinking about this the other day and I actually don't remember the second one are uh, six strength. What's the other six strength sentry that's a big deal? Flare. Yeah, was it flare maybe? It's flare not, six strength. I'm not terribly scared of flare. I think I it's know. six. Yeah, or I know it's a trace six, but at least archer right? Wayland on an archer again. Like, for a while around here, nobody ran Archer, and now it's, like, cool again to run Archers. And this is just, like, makes you hurt, where it's like, oh, I'm at five strength. <laughs> sucks. I mean, if you have two cloaks out, you're there. You have two cloaks out, or if you are running the Ottman suite with data suckers, there you go. You got or, your six strength. Or if you're running the strength with six strengths. Yeah. So, yeah, I mean, there are ways to make this or dinosaur where it at least hits, like, the threes <laughs> or lower, or... <laughs> But then, when you if you happen to have cloak out, you can you can get up there to get the the big daddies. Yeah. All right. All right. All right. Up next, we have Chicana. Chicana. It's a two cost one mu program. It's a virus. Uh, whenever you make a successful run on R and D, place a virus counter on it. If there are at least three virus counters, uh, the advancement requirement of all agendas is increased by one. That's something. I like, I like this new idea of causing you know agendas to take more to advance. That's, that's really going to start to play around with uh, pretty much every faction has a fast advance option. And pretty much every faction loves that option. Uh, I mean, 
you, you have it. You have sand sands. You have biotic labor. Um, Gentechi doesn't really, right? Trigger I mean, light. Trigger light. You, you, can also, it. you can also sand sand and. I mean, anyone can sand sand. Right, right that's what I'm saying. But, but you can sand sand with trigger light and it's beautiful. Yeah. Now, I guess my question with this card is how do you feel about it with Anart? No. Mm. People are going to be purging anyway. It's not worth it. My it's probably problem. not as good with Anart because the purge is going to hit a lot more than just that. My problem with this card as a Shaper player is. They see that I'm playing Shaper. Almost always, the first thing they're protecting is their deck, in my experience. Like, it's like, oh, they've got Maker's Eye, oh, they've got. I mean, R&D these days, against anybody, I think deck is. Deck is never more priority. So, I'm, it just feels interesting to me. Like, you have to make three successful runs on their deck after you've played this card. The thing unless, is, unless you surge it, boom, one run surge, you're done. The thing <laughs> is, you're going to be running RD anyway. Mm-hmm. If you want to win in this meta. But that doesn't mean you'll be able to successfully run R&D three times by the time this is yeah. useful. Uh, I think that you will. I don't know. If you're, if you're not able to run R&D three times in a game successfully, you probably haven't won that game. Just saying. Now, now, whether or not this is useful is a completely different idea, right? Like, it's a totally different thing. Um, so I think you'll be running R&D enough to make this useful, and it's a matter of, is this important to you? Is is what it's really a meta call? I think I think this is a meta card. It's like if you're playing a lot of tag and bag, probably not as big of a deal as if you're seeing a bunch of fast events. Yeah, I like it. You like the card? Mm-hmm. Just options, man. There's just so many options. It's great. All right, Zach, what do you think? Next up, we have a two cost, one memory program, Cyber Cipher, Icebreaker Decoder. One credit, break a code gate, subroutine, one credit, one strength. When you install it, choose a server. It can only be used to make runs on that server. Love or during runs on that server. Oh, man. Love this ice. This is so ice good. Breaker. Oh, I'll pick R&D. This is so good. I'm Kit, and I can break all of your ice. <laughs> yeah, Hi. yeah, yeah. It's so good. Two costs for four strength. It's a... Uh, what we're seeing still, like even more, is Shaper's ability to change the options that they're showing on the table. You choose R&D, you run it for four or five turns. They put down a, a two remote, you scavenge it, you bring it out, you declare a new server, the remote server, and now Kit can run that one instead, super efficiently. It's or like, if you just run two of these. Yeah, and you could run two or three of them. I mean, if you have, really there's three servers in the game. There's HQ, there's R&D, and there's the remote. And sometimes there's archives, and occasionally there's another remote right now, but like usually that's not the hardly case. ever. So if you can get three of these guys out, which is so easy for Shaper to do, you can you can make it happen. And then Kit makes it even easier. You know, you could even go back to the old tinkering. I'm just saying. You can. You should. Like, <laughs> it's great. So I think that's an awesome card. I think it's very cool. All right. Up next, we have a zero cost one MU program, uh, Parisia. Looks beautiful. Two recurring credits to trash assets. Wizard cried a little bit. <laughs> I mean... He's like, hey, that was my ability. Well, I don't know if this is... It's getting better, I'll say that. There's a lot more assets to trash now. At worst, it's pawn shop bait. Yeah. Yeah. Medical. I mean, yeah. Medical. I mean, it's good against HP, that's for sure. Over well, there ridiculous assets all right let's move on to self-modifying code shall we let's do it uh two mu zero to install it's a program it's three influence and it has a simple thing on it pay two credits and trash it search your stack for a program and install it paying the install cost shuffle your stack uh so (sighs) test run on crack Uh, this is unbelievable yeah this is just maybe best card Uh, Universally, it's just like great. I mean, correct me if I'm wrong, but I'm running. You read something, and I'm like, oh, I'm gonna go get the answer. Yep, that's exactly what you do. Yeah, you you are correct. <laughs> All right, cool. Yeah, it's fantastic. I mean, what? It's just good. <laughs> That's all I have to say. <laughs> I mean, three modifying codes, three tests running. Shaper, you can have anything that you want at any time. Let's just let's just get that let's get that out of the way. Anything from anywhere. Anything from anywhere. You just do it. Rigs are quick now, apparently. Super quick. Super quick. Yeah. Shaper, in a weird way, to me, 
feels as fast as criminal in a different way now. It used to be that it's fast in the I'm not screwed if it doesn't happen so fast way Which in my used, brain. It used to be that Shaper is like the boring faction that you play if you want to start running on turn 10. For whatever reason, that's just what Shaper was, right? And, and obviously the cards and the core kind of <coughs> put it that way. But now, I mean, Shaper is doing everything from the very first turn. Anything that you want. It's a very toolboxy type deck, and it's going to be hard okay. to play well. Toolbox. The, I mean, I think the cool part of that, <laughs> especially early, like if you imagine drawing one of these and you play it, and it's like, let's say you're sitting there, you've got 10, 12 credits. All right, I'm going to run your, one piece, your deck with one piece of ice. It's like... Then how that, bad yeah. could it really be? Or I'm going to Maker's Eye. Yeah, it's like, I make, you don't have to face check for Maker's Eye yet. Yeah, it's yeah, like, are you really going to raise that ice? Probably. But, still. And I mean, yeah, it's, it's, I love this card. Like, it's, it's not bad. Yep. This is just, the, this is the MVP of this thing, man. It's really good. This card is going to be in the game forever. Forever. You're going to see this. Probably. I, I like this three influence. All right, uh, Zach, another card that is just bonkers. <laughs> Two costs, one memory. How do you say that? Sahasrara. Sahasrara. I'm going to let you guys Sahasrara. love that happen. Two recurring <laughs> credits. Use these credits to install programs. You cannot use them to install a program that trashes this card. Well done. <laughs> this card is unbelievable. <laughs> this card is unbelievable. Can we just get that out of the it's way? It's really good. It's unbelievable. Like, it's unreal how good this card is. I was playing with it last night. So good. It's good. It pays for itself the first time you use it. If you're using Kate, it's better the first time you use it. I just, I can't get away from the fact of how much I want to run a Professor deck at this point. That you got to do it. It's that's, like, that's the answer. Just sleet out with programs and like, I, I, I wrote a blog really early on about Wayland and the uh, aggressive negotiation, I think it's called, where you score an agenda and you search your deck. And to the whole toolboxy thing, I love it. I love just being able to get the answers. So picturing, you know, the professor you're running one of of a ton of programs, and then it's like you can just go get what you want, and then they're cheap, and there's just ways to make it happen. Yeah. It's just fantastic. Yeah. Let me let me tell you guys a little secret. That's everybody watching as well. Um, this this is so huge for noise. It is unreal. It is unreal. Uh, Tim Tim and Grant built a noise deck yesterday, and I played it last night. And the ability for this to come out and sit on a gin, not, not costing you any memory, and then literally every turn, those data suckers and parasites and imps that you're installing are free, it makes noise insane. Like you save so much money over the He's course of the game. Out. You're installing <clears throat> virus after virus, cards are going to the archives, you can afford to make runs now. I was gonna say, you, you can, can afford to run, is you the can, thing. It used to be you have wild side, and you have to spend a turn like getting money and maybe try to make a run, but then you're not installing anything. It's like, it used to be like wild side, install a program, then you're low on cash probably. So it's like, can I make this run? And I've got a, I've got a token up Crypsis as well. So I'm gonna do that. And then it's like, well, I'm, not, I'm getting out of actions here. And now it's like that, that one action that you always had to use for an Armitage or to grab KD money or anything like that no longer exists, so it really opens the space up for noise. So I you dig. were happy with your performance? I dig this card. It's just unbelievably it's good. See, card. It, it's to me, it's a good card for a lot of people. So, and I mean, even in Shaper, you run some of these and like modded. Like you're not going to pay for anything ever. Nope. It's awesome. really good. That's the idea. Just install your Opus for free. Yep. <clears throat> All right. Up next, we have Inti. It's a zero cost, one MU Icebreaker Fractor. Uh, one credit to break barrier subroutine. Two credits to get plus one strength for the remainder of this run. One strength to start out as. I don't like it. What barriers are you afraid of? No one's really afraid None of barriers. Of it's just like they just stop you from doing things. <laughs> like, okay, it gets rid of Ice Wall, which is good. Um, Eli is pretty common. It's going gonna, it's gonna to cost a lot, or it's going to cost actions. Um, you've got... Even just wall of static. I mean, it's the same. The new neutral barrier. The same breaker as pipeline, except for it's a little cheaper. It, it's just not good. I 100 percent agree. I mean, yeah, I people can af you can afford to splash corroder if you're playing any deck. I mean, this card would be much more appealing to me if it didn't have a memory cost. If it's cloudy, yeah. It it just is so not there. 
<laughs> Two credits for one strength is so bad. It's hard, yeah. It's hard. It's the remainder of the run. Now, I mean, what have you run in this? It's just not important yet. I man. know this is this is super theory crafty, but the, the deck the we were hats. sort of mentioning earlier, where you're reducing strength, or you're you know paying one to get past subroutines at a certain strength, and it's like, if you have all those answers, and it's just <laughs> a really cheap like when you do run into things and you need it, it doesn't slow you down. It doesn't cost you money. It just is that any? Because if you can get their strength down, it doesn't actually cost you two to get to strength anymore. It's not worth the slot. So. I, yeah, I just don't think this is going to see play. And, and yeah, that makes it better. But and like in a professor deck, you've got your one corroder. You're going to test run it, or you're going to self modify and cut. It doesn't matter. Like you're going to splash corroder over this every time. I agree. Right, every time. Right. Uh, yeah. It's it's important to make really absolute statements so that you can be proven wrong later on. You guys are doing a lot of this in this video, so I hope in a year we get a revisit and just like do a riff. Hey, tracks given on what our, we have now, unboxing. what would be important is how wrong we are given like Gen Con and Worlds. That's the more important, you know. Yeah, we'll get to prove that in a couple of weeks. That's true. Um, right, Steven, what's up? Uh, I got professional contacts. So five cost connection resource. You can spend a click to gain a credit and draw a card. I love it. Seems good. Two influence. Uh, yeah, I mean, this is good. It's like an opus with a, with a card instead of a credit. This is good. It can be trashed, thank goodness. I love this card, yeah. I'm in. I believe. <laughs> all right, what more do you need to <laughs> I'm say? I'm in. I mean, that's, a, that's, yeah, that's all it is. Next up, three cost, resource, borrowed satellite. It's a link, plus one base link. Your maximum hand size is increased by one. I think this card goes ridiculously well with Exile. Mm-hmm. Because you're going to be drawing a ton of cards from the song, all those programs, and then you're also going to hit the link to use Underworld Contacts way faster. Looks good. Looks really good. I it's mean, solid. like I said, it's a, it's a good. That's the kind of card you can't really. It's like it's a link, and your maximum hand size is one. Do you want that? Yes. Then it does. Put things. it in there. Yeah, it does yeah. things. Um. What do you got? Is it YouTube? Uh, I think so. Uh, up next we have Ice <laughs> Analyzer. It's an Ice Analyzer. Reading the card. It's a zero cost resource. It's a virtual. So Foxfire can get it. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Important to know. Yeah. Yeah. Whenever the corp reses a piece of ice, place one credit on Ice Analyzer. You may use ice credit or you may use credits on Ice Analyzer to install programs. One influence. That's a card. I, I think, think this goes super cool. well with uh, the predecessor. Essentially, yeah. that makes this a compromise employee that's Wait, free. Would you think about running this with, in a criminal deck with three compromise and three ice analyzers? I mean, no. I don't think so. <laughs> just wondering. The, I mean, you, you just don't install enough programs to justify it. Yeah. Professor deck, yeah. I love I love this in a professor deck. Or it's just like, because I mean, I'm picturing the professor just constantly installing it's Essentially, a compromise employee at that point. Yeah. It's cool. For zero, I mean, you can't argue with it. Yeah, and then Quite. eventually you ace off. The corpse not really going to trash it, you know. Like, it's like is that if you're tagged, it's like I'm going to pay two for zero. I mean, it depends no, how many credits are on it. Yeah, it's true. But either way, you haven't lost. No, you know, I mean, you paid zero. Yeah. You, you played it. I like that card. All right, so that's the end of Shaper. Let's go ahead and move into the neutrals, then we'll do a, a wrap up of the whole thing. I'm going to do dirty laundry to cost event. Make a run after the run is completed. Gain five if it was successful. What do we think about this? It's a card. <laughs> it's, on, it's on some card stack. So my, my problem with this is a lot, actually. It's a card. It costs two. And then the payoff is three. It's like an easy mark. It's like an easy mark. But you save an action because you get to make a run with the event rather than after the event. Yeah, but it's I useless if you, get, if you get owned. But you're going to play it. You're not going to play it running a three unrest ice server. You're I mean, play when you know I, can get I played against Jacob the other day, I think, maybe. I don't remember who it was. But turn one, he just dirty laundered in my archives. It's like, yep. Yeah, it's easy okay. mark at that point. And like, if you have data suckers out, you're getting that benefit. You get successful run triggers. Desperado. For game. You get Desperados. Yeah. It's okay. Like, it's okay. It's not, you know, it's not blowing the socks off, um, but, but it's it, it, does, it does make the... It's an economy slot. The yeah. archive check. Yeah. Worth it. And I mean, I'm looking at, like, I used to run uh, like Wizard with Desperado and Data Suckers like on Gen, and it was like I'd bounce to Archives and then bounce over, and so now it's like Dirty Laundry to Archives, bounce over. Games I've got credits. more money. I've got Data Sucker. Yeah, Doppelganger. Sorry, that's what I was talking about. 
So I think this is a good card. Again, it's like one of those economy slots that if you need money, this is a way to do it if you're actively running a lot. Which you should be. Which you should be. Next up, we have a three cost resource, daily casts. Place eight credits from the bank on daily casts when it is installed. When there are no credits left on daily casts, trash it. Take two from daily casts when your turn begins. Sort of like a slow sure gamble. <laughs> sort of like a slow I mean, you're gaining card. five. It's a little bit bursty because you're getting two, but it's not like you can click, 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 and go. Um, it's money, man. Well, I mean, you're using it's, a click to install it, right? It's a clickless economy is what it is, which is good. And I feel like I feel like these neutrals are a shout-out to the non-shapers because I don't think Shaper is in the position as much where they need to run economy cards like this. They're going to have Opus out, and you can click for two, so why would you just play this? You're probably just going to click Opus. Well, for, for the, the rest the of the reason this. why is because it's clickless. Yeah. You're not using the clicks on. You use one click, and then you're gonna get two credits each turn. For sure, for sure. But like, that, that, that's the the appeal of this card. The appeal of it, for sure. That's, I think it's more point. appealing outside of Shaper. Like, I would agree. Obviously, even do you think Criminal likes this at all? I think they they can. I th I was thinking Anarch likes this as well. Like, I don't have a lot of click. If I got Wild Side up, I don't have a lot of action. Yeah. So I'll take two every turn to install stuff with. Yep. Yeah. Of show. All right, up next, we have the same old thing. Zero cost resource. Click, click, trash. Play an event from your heap paying its cost. That's good stuff right there. It's ridiculous. Yeah, this card is great. I don't know of all the different ways to say how great it is, but it's, it, it's great. I it's mean, it's great. It is so good with criminal. Yeah. It's so good with criminal. I can't think of anyone that doesn't like it. Like it's I so mean, scary. It's so scary with criminal. Everyone likes it, but criminal just sings with it, I think. Well, they have a lot of really good events. So that's what like, makes them criminal. The other day I was playing against Spencer, and I did five account siphons in one game. I mean, yeah, like, what do you do? He was like, I, I had two credits the entire game. What do I do? Mm -hmm. Yeah. And I was like, lose. Yeah, yeah, you lose that game. It's fantastic. Like, you, you, if you can get an HQ first turn with an account siphon and actually you know, start to kind of chain these things out like you did... You can't do anything without And money. I mean, <laughs> I also know that Joe the other day played five Maker's Eyes in one game. Uh, Unfortunately, he only scored like one point from it, right? Yeah, yeah. but like, oh, it's all right, you know. That's the worst. And it, I, I, you know, I've been looking at this as a way to get what we call the blue cards in your deck more efficiently, too. Mm -hmm. It's like, now you can splash one account siphon, one inside job, and that's all you need, and run three same old things. And as long as you see it, then you can play it potentially a few more times, yeah. and it's just as good as having three in the deck. Not just as good, yep. but it, I mean, it's central. it's almost as good. Yeah, it's, it's just like makes you more efficient use of your uh, influence. This is so good. <laughs> That's I mean I think we're good on the card. It's good. It's gonna get used. It's it's great. It's gonna Two be clicks, a lot of It's it's bets. well costed, but it's a really good card. Yeah, it's not like it's breaking the game, but it's it's, it's good. It's very powerful. Well, let's finish it off here with the source, uh, unique resource, connection, cost two to install. Um, it, it's weird. <coughs> uh, you guys notice this has two influence? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Is that, that's on purpose then, yeah. yeah? So it actually costs two influence Every, no matter who you are. No matter who you are, it costs two influence. Interesting. The advancement requirement of all agendas is increased by one. So a big effect there. I mean, that, this, is a, this is an answer to a lot of decks that could be way too good in the future, or maybe even now that are, I don't think they exist now no. from what I've seen, but. Uh, as an additional cost to steal an agenda, you have to pay three, and you trash this when you score or steal an agenda. So when the corpse scores or when you steal, it gets trashed. Um, like I said, I think this is a planted card. Like, this is, this is to me, and this is a sign of really good design in the game. It's like, this is an answer to a potential problem that may or may not exist yet. And it's a good way to design a deck in a certain way, right? You run this and the other one that increases the advancement of agendas. Things get weird. Pretty hard court. to score. I mean, just straight up things get weird. You know, I gotta pay four to do a breaking news. It's like, how do I even do that? <laughs> so things get weird. I'm not used to this. Well, I'll say that. Um, but this is a great card. I mean, th there I was think a- it's a meta card yeah, as well. Yeah, and I think there was a lot of concern in Netrunner about the fact that we're not playing Netrunner because the Corp is just scoring cards out of their hand the entire game, and there's not remote servers. Like, really, remote servers aren't mattering that much. And this is an answer to that game state. Yep. I, I agree. 
Solid card. Um, I'll be curious to see how much he gets used, but the fact that it's there. It may become even more important with the HP cards that we saw that give them a thousand actions a turn. Yeah. It's like, well, <laughs> they're scoring everything all the time, so I need, to, I need to put the brakes turn. on. One <laughs> metric thousand. All right, guys, so that is the wrap-up of the runner side of creation and control. Um, what do you guys think? Let's do a, what's your corp roundup and what's your runner roundup? What's just the, the general opinion of this box? I think it's a great box. Uh, I like what it does for the game. Uh, I can't wait for Jintaki one. <laughs> yeah, I mean, if, if you have a faction that you love, this should just get you amped. Like, if you played Shaper or HB, I'm sure your world is exploding right now, and I hope that's awesome. Um, and if not, then it's like, man, I cannot wait for those other ones. <laughs> I think what was really well done about the box is with the three new identities on each side, they actually found a way to get people that were not interested in these factions before potentially interested. Yeah. Where, you know, I'm looking at some of these Shaper identities. I already played Shaper, so you're not hooking me. But, like, there are people that are like, oh, the professor. I'd like to try that. Mm -hmm. And then whether it's Kit mm -hmm. or whoever. And so it's cool because you have this influx of cards for one identity. You have an influx of interest for those identities. But at the same time, because of the way Netrunner is built, any, anybody can use most of these cards. So it's not just those factions or those identities that are getting a major boost. Mm -hmm. So it's just a really cool influx of things, and I'm glad Shaper was one of the first ones. Yeah, I, I feel like overall this was, of like the bigger releases that we've seen from Fantasy Flight, I feel like this is like the most balanced and just, as far as the design space is concerned, as the only exclusion maybe being Tears Hand being weird. <laughs> uh, but aside from that, like, Everything seems really flavorful. It seems like really cool alternatives to the kind of Netrunner we've been seeing up to this point. Um, it supplements old themes. It brings in new themes. Uh, and it nothing screams to me horrible or awesome. Like, aside from that barrier breaker, which there's... I don't know. Like You just get bad breaker. That's just like a thing that... You just put bad breakers in, in packs, I guess. Which I, I think, too, like it was... You can't make too good of breakers. Yeah, you can't make them all good. <laughs> whether whether it was intentional or not, I mean, I, I feel like Shaper needed definitely a little more edge. I don't think HB needed more edge, but I also don't think that they necessarily got too much extra. Like, I mean, they're good. They've always been good, but I still, it's not like oh, I can't beat HB. Like, they got I, I more confusing. <laughs> they got more confusing for sure. <laughs> like playing against HB last night, I had no idea what was down in those remote servers. Most two point man. Ugh. You can't, like, running is scarier, like, remotes, what's down there is scarier, could be brain damage now, or it could be mandatory upgrades, like, <laughs> it's awful. So Which, you know, <laughs> it's interesting, but, like, I, I think criminal at this point is regarded as, like, the goods. Easily, yes. So, the juice. making running a little more scary is potentially a really good, like, because they just run, and they run a lot. And usually they get in. Yeah, and Tim usually doesn't have too much out as far as like like he doesn't have a rig. He eventually he'll get like Crypsis or whatever. Yeah, so like I like turn twenty. Yeah, but like big <laughs> scary ice that just makes it where it's like ah, they could probably hurt me pretty bad right here. Potentially puts that a little bit in check where it's like eh, I don't necessarily want to get three brain damage right now. That's why you run that uh, shaper card to prevent. Boom! Damage. Just some public sympathies, dude. You run that. Um, yeah, so overall, I think uh, <laughs> great job, great pack. Cheers and kudos to Fantasy Flight, and just I'm so excited. Like I just I'm excited about been, smoking been deck moves. building, and I will continue to do that. There's just a lot to exploit here. I think it's going to make Gen Con a really interesting tournament uh, for everyone. What is it like? Over 200 people, 280 with brand eight. new cards. It's like, going to be wild. This is man. the wild west. It's going to be <laughs> wild. <laughs> I don't even know how you get ready for that at this point. It's just. I'll like... tell you one thing. I will tell you one thing. If you are playing in a major event in the next month, Expose is back for me. It's so back. Like if you're criminal, I think you put the satellite uplinks back in if they ever left. And if you're not, Infiltration actually looks appealing again. It's just so scary out there, man. <laughs> it's just so scary. You don't gotta leave know. your house. You, you get, sometimes you got to know things that you don't know, or you're going to lose. So, uh, or you're, you're going to take a gamble on losing. Yeah, Oof. it's a bad gamble. It's um, not, not a shrimping. <laughs> so that's it from us, uh, Team Covenant. Thank you guys so much for watching. hope you enjoyed the review. Uh, you can actually grab Creation and Control from our web store uh, by following this link. That will get you there. And uh, if you'd like to subscribe to this channel to get more updates, reviews, battle reports, that kind of stuff for Netrunner and other LCGs, uh, check, check this link out uh, right here. So 
thank you guys for watching and we're all just really appreciative of you guys and we will catch you next time.